the familiar moments and in the unfamiliar moments, in the happy ones and the not so happy ones, God invites us to taste and see that he is good, to learn to relish him in all things. You know, whether you've been offered a promotion and you're terrified that you can't handle it, or maybe you've been challenged to reduce your budget by 25%. Maybe your teen has just come into the room and said, Mom, I need to talk. Something big has happened. Or maybe you're facing a health challenge. God invites us to taste and see that he is good, to relish him in everything. Take a look now at some of the conversations I've had recently with women who have indeed learned to taste and see, to relish that God is good. I'm meeting with Dr. Brenda Salter McNeil. And Brenda, in this whole theme of relish, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what holds you back from fully relishing a given moment. Well, I think that sometimes as a leader, I feel like I have to be always ahead. And so I'm always thinking about the future. I'm sometimes worried about finances. And so I'm thinking about that which is ahead of me. I, I'm a runner. And one of the things I've learned about running is that I don't always enjoy my journey because I'm not relishing the now. And so I think one of the things that can hold me back is this notion of being uh, overly concerned about the, the concerns of the future and not dealing with and experiencing the now. So when I feel like I'm not relishing, my moment, I hear God say to me, right now. All I'm asking for is now. This is Cherie Byington, and we're at Cornerstone Fellowship in Livermore, California. Hey, Cherie, help me understand what it means to you to relish whatever comes your way in life. Wow. Um, at a conference before, I heard someone say that they choose joy, and I actually think that it was... Um, someone who speaks at mobs, but I love that saying. I love that choosing joy, and sometimes there are days where people say, how are you, and I say, choosing joy. Um, it's just for me to relish in the everyday circumstances, to choose joy above all things, and to know that God works all things together for good. My name's Wendy Hagen, and when I think about the word relish and what it means to relish in something as a Christian, it looks different because anyone can relish and have joy and be excited when things are good, right? So what distinguishes us as believers, I think, is when we can relish in the Lord in the midst of circumstances that maybe we didn't expect. When I was 20 weeks pregnant with my first child, went to the doctor and I was joking around with her and she said, wait, Wendy, I need to stop you. Your baby has a lot of problems. And she went down the list. There's a cleft palate, and there's a heart defect, and her intestines are on the outside of her body. And the bottom line is she probably has trisomy 13 or 18 and might not make it to birth, probably won't live long if she does. And my husband and I were totally devastated, but God in his grace came down to us, and I had immediate peace. And in a weird, ironic way, was able to relish in the moment in that God was there for me and comforted me, and I want to give a little illustration of something that happened during that time. When we were kind of at our lowest point, my husband and I couldn't decide what kind of care to give her, comfort care, or intervention, what to do, and it was really hard. We made an appointment with the surgeon. I wanted to do comfort care, but I told my husband, I'll meet with the surgeon just in case she's doing better than we think and she's breathing on her own. And um, so we went to meet with the surgeon when we were just really having a hard time, and he sat down and began to speak, and then I said, wait a minute, are you a Christian? And he was from Nigeria. He says, yes, born again. And you? You Christian? Okay, listen, the devil, he tried to rob you of your joy. The devil, he tried to come between you and your husband, but God, he gonna take care of you and your baby. And that is relishing when my God comes down to me through this man, through this surgeon, and surgeons are supposed to be jerks and arrogant, right? No, this guy was the most gentle, sweet-spirited man who was led to the Lord by an American missionary woman, woman, by the way, when he lived in Nigeria, and here now he was ministering to me. That woman ministered to him. He brought it to me in the midst of my deepest sorrow, and I relish and cherish that time I had. I cherished it then, and I cherished it now because it was God coming down to me. Relishing God can be kind of a challenge. I remember when um, we were growing up, we would have relish trays at the holidays. Honestly, mine looked something like this. <laughs> we had the green olives with the little stuffed pimento in them, and the black olives and the, the celery. My mom always thought it was very dramatic and lovely to have the foliage left on the celery sticks. Okay. But mainly what I did was suck mm, the pimento out, 
and then cram the olive, you know, down on every single finger. I'm sure you did the same thing until I could eat off of the olives off my fingers. To me, this was a relish tray, and it was delightful. I didn't always eat these things, but on the holidays, I recognized them. They were familiar, and I'd enjoyed the taste of them, so I relished them. But when I got married, my husband's family had some different tastes from mine, and other odd kinds of items appeared on our relish trays. Things like these itty bitty baby pickled corns. Ew. I didn't like these. They were not familiar to me. My taste buds weren't ready for them. And you know, to be honest, that's exactly how it is with God. We relish what is familiar. We do not relish the unfamiliar. And yet in Scripture we're told very specifically to taste and see that the Lord is good. In Psalm 34, uh, verse 8, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. Taste and see, and that word in Hebrew really does mean to take a bite of and try it out. A friend of mine, maybe 10 years ago, challenged me in some of the hardest moments in one of my friend's lives. Elisa, have you given thanks to God for this particular circumstance? And I thought, I don't want to. But the writer of Psalms talks about tasting in order to see that the Lord is good. And when we can see that the Lord is good, we do give thanks to Him. Later on, over in the New Testament, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, where we hear, actually in starting in verse 2, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. When we learn to thank God for even what is unfamiliar, for even what doesn't make sense to us, when we learn to relish Him, we learn that He is good. This Greek word in the New Testament means to try and taste, then to experience, and eventually to be nourished by it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. From Psalm 34, 8 to 1 Peter 2, verse 3. When we taste and try it out, when we give thanks to God in everything, when we relish Him in the familiar and the unfamiliar, we learn through experience that the Lord is good.